Hello and welcome to MATLAB Programming for Numerical Computations. We are in the last week of this particular course. In this week, we are covering Module 8, Practical Aspects of Solving Ordinary Differential Equations. So what have we covered in Module 7 is listed over here. We started with Euler's method, both implicit and explicit method. We showed that Euler's explicit method is going to be stable only for a small range of step size. Thereafter, we talked about Runge Kutna methods. Then we talked about MATLAB solver ODE45. However, we considered problems in single variable only. Finally, in the last two lectures of that module, we covered higher order Runge Kutta methods and error analysis. With higher order Runge Kutta method, we specifically covered the RK4 method. In this module, we are going to cover extension to multivariable case. We are going to cover how to solve difficult stiff ODEs. Before we go on how to solve the stiff ODEs, we will cover what stiff ODEs actually mean. And finally, we'll finish off with some practical examples in the last two lectures of this module. So let's get started with an example. This is an example, a textbook example for numerical methods courses. The overall equation, as you know, is given by this. This is a mass and we displace this mass by a certain amount and there's a spring and there's a damper. And because of the, this displacement, this uh, this particular uh, mass is going to oscillate what we are going to consider is this particular model the initial condition that is required is stated over here at time t equal to 0 we have displaced this mass by a distance of 1 the velocity is 0 and we release the mass so this as you see is a second order ordinary differential equation what we need to do is to convert this into a system of first order ordinary differential equations. The way we do this is we realize that dx by dt can be represented by another variable v and we can write this as m dv by dt plus cv plus kx equal to 0. So when we write that we are going to get two first order ODEs. The first equation rather is dx by dt equal to v. The initial condition is at t equal to 0, x is 1. At t equal to 0, v is equal to 0. We are going to convert this into matrix differential equation. And that is given over here. We are going to define our vector y as x, v. As we have been doing throughout this course, we are going to define all our vectors as column vectors. That means we are going to have n rows and a single column. In this case, there are two variables and therefore we have two rows and a single column. And we have y is defined as x and v and dy by dt is the first guy is v. The second guy is minus cv plus kx whole thing divided by m. So let's go on to MATLAB and try to solve this problem. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is to create a function that will calculate dy for given values of y and t. Spring fun. Okay, and as we have been doing so far, function f val equal to mass spring fun t comma y. Okay. If you recall, this line remains exactly the same. Function for mass spring system using OD45. Okay. So what's the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to extract our x and v. So our x equal to y1, v equal to y2. Calculating our f val, f val 1 equal to v and f val 2, f val 2 is going to be negative of cv plus kx divided by m. It's negative c multiplied by v plus k multiplied by x divided by m. 
okay the other thing that we are going to do is we need to define our f val as a column vector so rather than writing f1 equal to v and f2 equal to this right hand side we are going to write f2 comma 1 is this and f1 comma 1 is this we have not yet defined our constant c k and m okay so let's go and do that define constants c equal to k equal to m equal to define dy by dt okay so let's go to matlab and sorry let's go to powerpoint and see what values we have so this is what we are going to solve with for m equal to 10 c equal to 5 k equal to 15 so m equal to 10 k equal to 15 and c equal to 5 k equal to 15 and c is equal to 5 so we'll just save this okay so now let us make a driver function that runs this mass spring damper system so let's call this edit solve mass spring and it will create a new uh, script to run the mass spring system okay and what do we have over here we have we need to give the initial conditions the initial conditions is y not equal to 1 0 y not equal to 1 semicolon 0 because that's a column vector and we want to run this from t equal to 0 to t equal to 10 so as we have done in the past t equal to 0 comma 10 okay and then what we need to do is we need to use ODE 45. So how do we solve using ODE 45? T solution comma Y solution equal to ODE 45 at T comma Y. Remember this is going to be the syntax that we are always going to use for ODE 45 T comma Y space the name of the file that is mass spring fun mass spring fun t comma y okay we want to run this let's call this as t span instead of t to make it very clear that it's a span of times t span comma y zero okay and finally we need to plot so plot t sol comma y sol we actually need to solve uh, to sorry we actually need to plot the location versus time so the location is in all of the rows and it's going to be in the first column okay and let me comment solve using od45 plot the results let us run this so we have run this and this is an underdamped mass spring damper system we start with uh, with the location at 1 and it oscillates before it will finally go to steady state instead of 5 let's say we increase it to 50 and let's run this system and see what we are going to get okay as you can see as we increase the damping coefficient we do not get oscillatory response but we get a response like this what we will do next is we decrease the c instead of 5 or 50 we'll decrease it to 1 and see how the response is going to be as you all might remember from your physics classes the response is going to become more oscillatory so let's run this and see as you can see this compared to what we got at uh, c equal to 50 this is significantly more oscillatory so what we have done is the overall od45 the way it works for a single variable and multiple variables is nearly exactly the same you are you need to define the function exactly as we did in single variable case name of the function t comma y t is going to be scalar as it was before however y is a vector keep in mind that y 
is going to be a column vector. We want this to be column vector just for uniformity and it should return f val in the previous module we returned f val as a single value in this particular multivariable case we are going to return f val as a 2 by 1 vector the size of f val has to be the same as the size of our vector y why because f val returns dy by dt what we are going to do next is to what we what to do if we have rk4 method not single variable rk4 but if we had to do a multivariate rk4 until this point what i have covered is something that i want you to play pay close attention to because that is something that you are going to use in multiple real scenarios rk4 method that i'm going to show in the next few minutes is just for demonstration purpose it's just for you to see how everything in Runge Kutta method or in most of the numerical techniques follows similar rules for multivariable case just the way we had for a single variable case. The only difference is now instead of a single variable you have to be just a little bit careful in tracking a multivariate case. Okay, And edit my RK4. Okay, So this was the solver that we had generated in our previous module okay so let's go ahead and change this our y naught is one zero so let's make that change our y naught is one zero our t naught was zero and t end is ten so t end let's change that from five to ten so this is our t naught this is our t end this is our y naught okay Let's keep our h equal to 0 0.1 as before and our n as before is going to be this. Now when we are to initialize the solutions, our time vector is going to be just a single vector as we have over here. Okay, What we are going to do with y is that y we are going to denote this as a 2 by n plus 1 vector. Rather, y at time 0 will be in the first column, y at time 0 0.1 will be in the second column, y at 0 0.2 will be in the third column, so on and so forth. So that's the reason why we are initializing y in this manner. Okay. Next thing we are going to do is populate the initial value of y and we are going to do that with y colon comma 1. What that means is all the rows in the first column are going to be populated by our initial condition 1 0 okay now solving using rk4 method but we need yi so yi we will say is equal to yi okay so k1 is going to be equal to my fun now the name of the function has changed to mass spring fun okay so let me just copy this and paste it everywhere. Okay, so what I have done over here is I just said yi equal to yi, okay, and then replaced all of yi's with yi. Okay. There is going to be an error with this and I'll come to that in a minute, but let's just write this as it is. Okay. And our y i plus one, we will just leave it as, as this. Okay. So let's keep this and let's run and try to see what is going to happen. This is going to give us an error and that's because I have not kept track of the fact that y i's are now vectors. So let's run. Okay. And what we get is that index exceeds matrix dimension. And that's because over here we have taken our y i as scalar. If we type y i, y i is one. What I should have been doing is to give the first column of 
the capital Y vector. Uh, sorry, capital Y matrix. So the first column is going to be colon comma I when I equal to one. Okay. So as you can see, the thing that has changed from RK to R, sorry from RK four single variable to RK four multivariable is that instead of taking a scalar value, now I have to take that entire column. That's one thing that has changed. Nothing really has changed significantly over here. The other thing that I will change is this. I will write this as y new. I will write this as y new equal to y i plus h by six into weighted sum of k's, and then I would write y all of the rows in the i plus oneth column. So all of the rows in the i plus oneth column will be equal to y new, and that is going to be. What I'm gonna do, and y end, that is y at the last point, is going to be the last column. Last column is all the rows in the end column, and that's going to be colon, comma end. That's going to be our y end, and plot t comma y. Okay. So let's save this and run it, and hopefully this will run without any error. Okay. And this is how. Our solution looks like with RK4 method. I have plotted x as well as the velocity. Let me just plot x over here by saying the first row and all the columns. The first row has the location. The second row has the velocity. So if I have to plot only the locations, I'm sorry. If I have to plot only the locations, then I will have to give this command and let me run this. Okay, and this is the result that we get using RK4. Let me click over here and say, "Hold on," so that this plot is held, and I will solve this using OD45 and compare the results by saying plot dashed red color line. So let's save this and let's run this. Let's look at the plot. As you can see, the solution using OD45 falls exactly on top of the solution using RK4. And the reason it does that is RK4 is a high-order method, and its accuracy is similar to that you will see in OD45. Okay. So with that, I come to the end of this particular lecture. What I have covered primarily in this lecture. is to extend how you will solve odes from single variable to odes in multiple variable using ode45 thereafter i covered something that is beyond the scope of this particular course what i covered is how you can simply extend single variable rk4 method to a multiple variable rk4 method but the take home message primary message from lecture 8.1 is if you want to use matlab solvers od45 for multivariable case going from a single variable to multiple variable case is fairly straightforward with that i come to the end of this lecture and i will see you in the next lecture thanks and bye